Let's cook these kids some food. I'm bringing to you the dinners of the week as well as a few breakfast ideas. Check it out. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Katie and this is Rouse Rising. This is where I share with you all about my holistic homemaking and made from scratch meals. If you're into that, be sure to click the subscribe button so you can be a part of the Rouse Rising family as well. Hit that notification bell so that you can stay in the loop with all of my most recent uploads. Okay, we're gonna get some chili going. I'm just getting these onions in here and then I'm also gonna throw in this bag of celery that my celery was starting to go bad. So what I did was I just chopped it all up because I had no reason to use it. And I chopped it all up for the camping trip and froze what I wasn't gonna use and took the rest of it on the camping trip to make chicken salad. Pre-chopped, so all I had to do was just dump everything and have chicken salad. Just using up some baby carrots that I had that the kids didn't wanna eat anymore, so they're gonna go in here. Okay, so we've got this meat going here. I'm gonna get this browned up real nice with all of these veggies. And then I've got these pinto beans that I made in my last cook with me. We're gonna be adding these beans. I'm gonna get some tomatoes and some chili seasoning going here as well. Get all that goodness in there. We wanna make it yummy and nutritious, so we're adding lots of garlic. I had a jar of it in the fridge and I've been trying to use it up. I don't have any fresh garlic, so I'm trying to use up some of my pantry stuff that I have stocked. I don't even know how much we're gonna do. We're just gonna, whoa, a lot, I guess. Oops, same thing with this, it's a lot. And the same thing with this smoked paprika. I'll do about a teaspoon, so I did about a teaspoon of each one. Mix that in there. Oh wow, it smells amazing. Beautiful. Let those all kind of soak up all the oils and cook a little bit. Can of diced tomatoes. Can of pinto bean, or sorry, these are kidney beans. And oh my gosh, they're not organic, but that's okay. This are part of my uh, end of days supply, but I'm trying to work through that. And we took these on the trip and ate some of this jar on the trip, about half of it. So we've got those left over. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this and get all that goodness out of there. Make this chili a little bit more soupy because we're also gonna be adding some red lentils to it. I'm gonna make it stretch. So we're gonna add about another cup of water. To this and this is just gonna simmer away for the rest of the day until the kids get home from school I'm also gonna make some cornbread I'm also gonna add some oregano to this I think we're supposed to add oregano I don't have oregano plain so I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning to this chili it's about a teaspoon of oregano I added a little bit more water now you're gonna need to add water if you're adding lentils so we're gonna dump some lentils in here I'd say about a cup so the lentils will absorb that little bit of liquid and then we'll have a nice chili. I tasted it and the one, the one and a half teaspoons of salt was really good. It could probably use a little bit more, but I'm just gonna leave it at that and adjust it once it's done cooking. Next up, I made all those pinto beans, but we ate all of them. And then I needed to can up some beans for the pantry. So I've canned up a variety here that you see. I put all of these in the um, pressure cooker, two different batches, yielded all of these delicious beans for quick and easy meal nights. I'm so happy to have those. I made refried bean mix in the pinto bean jars, and that's just gonna be easy to mash up for all kinds of yummy meals. And the next night for dinner, we are going to do some beef short ribs. What I'm gonna do first of all, these are kind of still a little bit frozen, but what I'm gonna do first is salt and pepper these generously, and then we're going to sear them in the Instant Pot. The Instant Pot is on right now. I'm also gonna be using a bit of rosemary and Worcestershire sauce, and we're just gonna sear these off and then let them slow cook all day long into a delicious, delicious, tender, juicy meal. Let me show you what it looks like right now. And I put them all on their sides so that there was enough room for them. I'm going to be adding some of this chicken bone broth that I made back in October, as well as some rosemary, some more Worcestershire sauce, 
Let's see, I got the rosemary somewhere. And then these are gonna slow cook for the rest of the day. Apples and carrots. All right, sweetheart, just a second. Let mommy get this going. Okay, so I'm just gonna sprinkle some rosemary in there. Give this some nice flavor. Rosemary is really great with any kind of red meat. It just makes it really delicious. You can also add red wine in there and let these beef short ribs cook down in the red wine all day long. I'm also gonna be adding a little bit of onion. This is minced onion. And then I'm also gonna be adding a little bit of minced garlic to this. I know what you're thinking, this doesn't look very appetizing, but when you get the meat bits out, it is delicious. And then I'm gonna show you how later on this week, I am gonna chop this up really, really fine and use it in a beef pot pie. There is some delicious broth in there. I'm also gonna save that and reserve that for the pot pie I'll be making later on. This broth ends up being so gelatinous. You can already see there's a lot of fat in it that's gonna rise up to the top pretty quickly. And when I make the pot pie, I'm gonna be using that fat as part of my roux that we're gonna to make to thicken up the pot pie filling. So nourishing, so delicious. Another amazing way that you can stretch your food and feed your family extra meals with, this was meant to be one meal tonight. I had to run into town. So Aaron ate some of it. The kids had something else for dinner. I'm not sure what he made for them. But then the leftover, I'm saving for that pot pie, like I told you. But just another way that you can use your food to make it go farther. That rib meat was loaded with collagen and so much nourishing goodness that I'm gonna be able to get into my family's bodies through that pot pie later this week. So nothing goes to waste around here, as you can see. Next up, we're gonna be mashing up some of those beans that I canned. These are the pinto beans that had cumin and onion, garlic, some different seasonings in it. So that we could just dump them in a pan just like I'm doing right here. And then we're gonna take a potato masher to them and mash them up. Aaron's gonna give me a hand here. He is going to mash them while I go take care of the baby for just a minute. And it's kind of hilarious because he's being very gentle mashing these beans. I told him to mash them up and he didn't know what to do. So he just kind of pats them down gently into the pan. And then I come back and he says, I didn't know what you wanted me to do. And I take the potato masher and I proceed to smash the living daylights out of the beans because we're making refried beans. So here, let me show you how it's done, y'all. That's what we do. And then they get all nice and creamy. What we're gonna use these for tonight is just a bean dip. The kids are just gonna have this with some tortilla chips and some cucumber pickles and some other little things. They're probably gonna have some carrots you know, whatever. It's just a simple, easy, like, I don't even know if this is actually dinner. So call it what you will. We're going to have refried beans, chips, and veggies. Delicious, easy, and nutritious. After cleaning out my cast iron pan, I just, or my cast iron skillet, if I want to be correct, I just give it a wipe down with my towel, dry it out, and then I'm going to throw some pig lard in it and heat it up and get it seasoned up real nice and pretty. How do you guys like to re-season your pans? Sometimes when I cook things like beans, it just sucks all the moisture, all the oil out of it, and it needs to be re-seasoned. So I heat it up real nice and hot, coat it with some fat and let all that fat absorb into the cast iron, and then I just let it cool on the stove like that, and it's beautiful. I also baked lots of bread as I do every week. And this week I was trying out uh, baking bread with fresh milled wheat. And you can check that out. I will link it down below and up here in this video. This bread is just so delicious. I slathered some butter on top of it. Mm, chef's kiss as Kimberly would say from Wad Squad. We're also gonna be making some bone broth here this week. This is pork bone broth. So. I'm gonna add this in later, but this was a huge process that I just finished up today and I'm gonna do a different separate vlog on pork bone broth so that you guys can catch how to make that and I'll talk you through it. It's really simple, but that went down this week as well. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, so some of you all were wondering what is my bread machine bread loaf or loaf of bread recipe and it's the same as the recipe that I showed you guys the other day that I made by hand. 
except for this one's stuck for some reason. Okay, there we go. All right, I left it in there a little bit long. Um, but this is my standard loaf of bread machine bread recipe, and it is the same as my loaf of bread recipe. I will link it down in this video's description. It's just I put it in the bread machine and it does all the work for me. Okay, so for my rice, I like to use uh, chicken bone broth. This is chicken bone broth from November. I'm going to go ahead and use this up because we need some extra nutrition in our diets tonight with our rice. Alright, that's my bones saying that they're ready. I'm going to go ahead and get this chicken broth heated up so that I can make my rice. are beans that I just canned this past week and this particular one did not seal. It didn't seal properly so we're gonna go ahead and cook these up tonight for dinner. All right we've got rice going, we've got beans going. We're gonna add a little bit of seasoning to the beans. We're gonna do some southwest seasoning just to liven them up a little bit. Tending to these bones while I make dinner on the stove top. I've got the bones roasting in the oven and then I'm gonna put them in the pots of warming water. I'm gonna use my instant pot and I'm gonna be using my slow cooker because I have uh, enough bones to make two different pots of it. And these are gonna cook for the next 24 to 48 hours. They're gonna be in with some celery, some peppercorns, some apple cider vinegar, just the typical bone broth, uh, things that I add along with it. Next up, we are gonna make a very large batch of sourdough buttermilk pancakes or buttermilk sourdough pancakes, whichever you like to call them. We're gonna start out with about two cups of sourdough starter, two eggs, and then about two cups of buttermilk, but I am going to use up all of the buttermilk. I'm gonna end up just making a giant batch of sourdough pancakes because I'm gonna freeze some of these to make life a little bit easier to this wet mixture I'm just going to throw in all my dry ingredients on top and I am adding about a cup or so of flour I'll add more if I need to but then I'm going to add a little bit more like I said I'm just going to end up dumping all this buttermilk in here and call it a day next up I'm going to do a couple teaspoons of vanilla and a little pinch of salt always need some salt I'm going to throw in some aluminum free baking powder to give this a little bit more boost. We have incorporated the melted butter. That was about four tablespoons of melted butter. And then we heat up all the skillets, all the pans, not all of them, but we've got our big flat top skillet, our griddle, and our uh, other skillet. So we're gonna cook up as many of these pancakes as we can. And they're perfect from the freezer. I just throw them in the toaster on the mornings for the kids and I can fry up a couple eggs for them and they can have some eggs and some pancakes. A nice, hearty, filling, delicious breakfast. A while back, I made some uh, beef pork ribs and I've had this in the refrigerator. So now I'm just cooking them down. In some of this pork broth fat, I just skimmed off some of the fat and threw it in with the meat just to give it some extra juicy deliciousness. And then I'm gonna use this broth to make my roux and it's gonna be a delicious, nutritious, gelatinous, amazing pie filling for my family. I'm gonna show you what this broth looks like after I take the tallow off. You know it's got good stuff if it's jiggly, jello-y like this. So this is gonna go in and my meat's gonna cook and this is gonna warm up because once I make my roux in the pan, I'm gonna add this as well as the vegetables. I'm gonna throw the vegetables in here and get those cooking. In this pan is a combo of tallow and I added in some extra butter because I just didn't feel like I had enough fat to get this flour browned. I've got my baby singing on my shoulder. But we're gonna brown up this flour and get it cooking a little bit in this pan before we add the rest. Once this has had a, about a minute or two to cook in my pan, I'm gonna be ladling the mixture, the meat and vegetable mixture into my pan and this is gonna thicken up really quickly. So I have to keep stirring and keep adding so that it's a nice creamy 
mixture and not clumpy. You don't want clumps in there, so keep mixing and it will all be beautiful. And I'm gonna be using that easy pre-made pie crust that I unroll. I got it from the grocery store. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. And the reason why I love it so much is because I can fill it with something nourishing. I don't have to fill it with sweet sugary dessert or anything crazy. I can use it to, you know, it's an easy, not homemade product, but I can make it nourishing nonetheless. I'm going to lay this top piece over the top and then I'm going to tuck it in around the edges so that it's nice and sealed, pinching it off so that none of the liquid leaks out. And then I'm going to be piercing the center of the pie so that it can breathe the steam so that it doesn't explode in my oven into a preheated oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna bake for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna cover it with foil and let it bake another 15 to 20 minutes until it is cooked through. I can't always meal plan at the beginning of the week or month even. I have a difficult time doing that because of the style of cooking that I do. I do a lot of perpetual cooking and I do a lot of reusing of leftover ingredients. You wanna know a real fact? I wasn't even gonna make a pie tonight. I was gonna use that leftover meat and make like a stroganoff and put it over egg noodles, but I didn't have any egg noodles. So as the meat was cooking, I decided, oh, okay, well, I'll make a pie, which ended up being the best decision because we ate it all. There wasn't any leftover. It was so yummy. The kids actually ate it. And then I was able to freeze these up on my baking pan, my parchment lined baking pan, and then I stuffed them into these gallon size Ziploc bags and we will eat these this week for breakfast with our egg and voila next we are going to make a humongous batch of banana bread muffin pancake sheet pan I don't know I'm just gonna throw a bunch of stuff in a bowl and whatever comes out at the end you will be happy to know is going to go in our bellies. Nothing goes to waste around here. Not these ripe bananas, not the delicious things I'm going to make with them. Just like there's a hundred ways to skin a cat, there's at least a thousand ways to make banana bread or banana muffins or banana sheet pancake. Okay, this is a triple batch. So we are starting out with one cup of oil, three cups of milk. We're going to do two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I'm always a little heavy handed on that. And then we're going to crack in four eggs for some extra protein and give all of that a mix. For the dry ingredients, I did one and a half cups of sugar, two cups of oats, three cups of all purpose flour. I did four teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of baking soda, two teaspoons of salt and give that a mix. I always like to pump up my banana bread. So to this, I'm gonna add about a cup, I end up adding the whole thing, of flax meal because I need to use that up. It's been in my fridge for a while. And then I'm gonna add another cup or so of these whole hemp seeds. That's gonna give us some extra protein in these banana muffins. That's gonna help my kids be a little bit more sustained. The flax meal has lots of omegas in it. So that's gonna help feed their brains and just make them grow healthy and strong. We always try to add in what we can where we can when it comes to things I'm feeding my kids. I really wanna give them the best and things that they'll actually eat, but I gotta be sneaky too. I have sprayed these muffin tins with some coconut oil spray and just ladling in about two thirds full, maybe a little bit less than that. Then I'm also gonna be doing some paper lined cups, but I've had an issue lately with everything I put in these cups sticks, and maybe it's because we're eating them when they're warm. I don't know, but every time I use paper, they stick. So I'm going to experiment today, see which ones we like better. Do we like the paper cup? Well, also, and I ran out of paper cups. Or do we just like the sprayed ones? I like the idea of not having to wash these pans, uh, but um, again, the, it wastes so much food when the banana bread muffin sticks to the paper cup. So if you have a secret, am I supposed to be spraying the paper cups with oil as well? Because I don't do that. Uh, usually everything that I cook in these sticks. So let me know down below. Am I just not using the right recipes? Am I not spraying them with oil beforehand? Like what am I supposed to do to keep things from sticking? Do I need to let them cool completely before I try to peel the paper off? I mean, even the next day, sometimes things stick. So I think, I don't know, I'm just, maybe it's the paper. These muffins are going into a 350 degree preheated oven. The recipe called for 400 degrees, and at first I started out with 400 degrees, and it 
cooked them way too fast. It browned them way too fast on the top. I found in my oven at my elevation and all of that, that 350 to 375 degrees would be the sweet spot for these. In about 20 minutes, these muffins will be done. This is my first time trying a muffin recipe on a sheet pan, and I have to say this was amazing. I cut those up into squares, froze them right up. Everything's going into the freezer except for what we eat today. I suck as much air as I can out of the bags and then pop them in the freezer, and we have easy to go breakfast. I hope that you have enjoyed cooking with me the meals of the week. I hope you got some ideas for what to prep for your family this week, how you can use your pantry staples to feed them nourishing meals and what you can do with things like the broth. Thank you so much for watching with me today. Until next time, bye.